Okay, we're going to show you how to enter a new work order. So you're in the main screen here and you would click on work orders, of course. Then you select new work order. Okay, so I'm going to pretend like this is an existing customer. I find my customers by phone number, but you can also search by site address, site name, customer name, contact name. Okay, once you save it, one, or once you do a search once for that, so if I did it by site address and I did the search once, it would automatically default to pull up site address. But because I always do it by phone number, it defaults there. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four. Do a search. It gives me everything with one, two, three, four in their address or in their phone number here. And I'm going to choose this this customer. I can come over here and choose which site for that customer I'm working on. Okay, it shows me right there what the site address is. It shows me if I have any service agreements for that customer. So I, if I, if they call in and they say, hey, I need you to come out to the site, I can say, wait a second, let's look at these service agreements and take a peek and see when's the next time we're going out there. So I could say, oh, wait, I have a, a work order scheduled to come out there next month. Maybe I want to just add something to this work order. Or I can go ahead and continue with the work order I was just started. So I can notice how it keeps for me, hey, you've got an unfinished work order down here. So I'm going to go back to that. And it still pulls up the same information that I had. I can add additional contacts if I want to. If this is an invoiceable work order, so if I'm going to create an invoice from this, I check that box. If this is just a maintenance work order, something happened, um, you know, my technician last week went out and fixed the AC and there's still another problem, so I'm not going to invoice them for the second work order for the same problem, I can uncheck that. You can have the PO number here, uh, and that PO number will flow through into QuickBooks Financial, so it can print out on the invoices. And then I have some custom fields down here that I have set up. So what's the source, yellow pages, what's the reference, type B, type A, color style, so I can have additional fields. And those are all completely customizable. So we're going to say next here. Then it's going to take us into what is our problem that we're having or why we're making this work order. Right away on the screen, again, it's going to say, hey, you have uh, some work orders open for the same customer at the same site. Maybe you want to take a look at these before creating this work order. And again, from this point, I can click on the work orders, take a look at them, see when they're scheduled to go out. Okay, so this is scheduled to go out. Uh, let's see. Uh, it doesn't say right here, but I would be able to go onto the assignment here and see when it was scheduled to, to, to see this as needs to be scheduled. So I'd be able to see when I'm going to go out to see this customer, or, and I can just edit that work order, or I can continue with the work order that I already started. Okay. So we say, what type of work order is this? This is a request. Uh, I have my service categories set up, so we're going to say it's a common problem. There's some burning smells. And then I put in a custom field here. It smells really bad. Please come quick. Okay, you can add additional problems as needed. So maybe we have a burning smell and we also have no power. Okay, all this would flow through on the work order to the, to the technician's phone or and or print out on the work order copy. I can't have custom fields for the worker down here, so I can fill that in there. And then notice down below, I do have the ability, I can pull up the site service, so recent service for that site. One of the reasons that that is good to take a look at is if you have a whole bunch of canceled appointments recently, you can see what, you know, why it was canceled, pull that up and see what was going on. You can also look at the recent equipment service at that site and also the customer service as a whole. So it gives you right there on the screen some additional information. So I'm going to say next here. Now we come into the assignment phase. So we decide what we are going to be doing here. Um, is this a scheduled appointment? Yes, I'm going to schedule it because I have them on the phone right now telling me the problems. I'm going to schedule it for, let's just say, for today, later on this afternoon. And it's going to pull up for me a time, but I'm going to schedule it for 6 p.m. Okay. I can do a promised arrival time of between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m., for example. If you guys do that in your business, you can assign that. You don't have to necessarily. All that does, though, is that based on the problems on the previous screen that I pulled up, it defaults for me how many hours it should take. So it's saying, I promise to arrive by 6 p.m. It's 
going to take two hours. So this work order is due to be finished by 8 p.m. And all of these are just timestamps. So you could run reports to see how many work orders were not completed within an hour of the due to, uh, due to or due by time. Okay, so they're all just timestamps for us. And it tracks also, you know, this work order is due by 8 p.m. and it wasn't completed until 10 p.m. So it'll track that. Okay, you can set the priority for this work order. Again, it's defaulting to emergency because that's what I have set up uh, as a default for one of the problems on the previous screen. You can filter the skill for the technicians down below. So I can choose which skill level we want to use and filter the technicians. This is a default again, but you can change it at any time. What's the estimated duration? You can have an ETA if you want to. Okay. And then down below here, we have our technicians that we have set up in the system. So first thing I want to know is notice that you can click on this. It does give, a, first of all, an in route time, a little bit of an route time there, 30 minutes of, to get there. Uh, I can drag and drop this, move this work order around so that it's, it's, I mean, it's easy. It's drag and drop to set it up. All right. I have here that the primary on the work order, who the primary is, that's what this P stands for. That means this person's going to be responsible for checking into the job, uh, accepting the job, creating it, finishing it out to make sure and saying what work was finished. But I can also assign on the schedule some secondaries to show up at that job as well. So these secondaries will see this work order on their list of non-primary work orders. Okay. Couple things here. I can also pull up a map and see right there on the screen when I'm deciding who wants to go or who I should be assigning this to. I can pull up a map and see, okay, where is my work order? Down here. And where are my technicians? All right, so one of my technicians is up here. Maybe that's not the best person to send out and I want to pick a technician who's located nearby. This is again if they have GPS set up on their phone and the app on their phone and they're using their phones to check in and out of work orders. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my schedule view here and I have it on the schedule for these people and I'm going to go ahead and say next. This is the opportunity we have to review and confirm, make sure everything looks okay on the screen. We can add some internal notes here if we need to. Uh, if you need to say, you know, customer was very upset, really wanted you to come out yesterday and we didn't make it, whatever it is. You can add some additional notes that are internal notes there. Then we can go ahead and say finish. Okay. So now we have here uh, our pending work orders on the screen. Okay. It's flagged as, as uh, or let's see, yeah, pending work orders. It's, it's flagged as, um, as red because it's something that needs to be picked up um, soon because we have it as an emergency work order. And once the technician picks it up in the field, then, th then we'll know that uh, it'll turn to blue and say that it's picked up and we'll know that it's an okay thing right now. Okay. So that's how you create a work order.